Hey everybody, welcome to Jimmy's Records and Tapes. I'm Jimmy Pardo. This week we're talking about 1978. We've got it on vinyl, CD and cassette. We've got pop rock, heavy metal, punk, funk, rap and new wave. All sales are final, but you'll never regret all the music you get at Jimmy's Records and Tapes. Hi, everybody. Indeed, welcome to Jimmy's Records and Tapes, the show where I take you on a musical journey down memory lane, courtesy of my record collection. This week, 1978. What was going on in the world? Well, Greece was the word. Everybody was crazy about the movie Greece. Also, Halloween, which remains my favorite horror movie. Maybe even my top five movies of all time, the original Halloween. All of the sequels, garbage. Sweden was the first to ban aerosol sprays uh, out of concern that it might be ruining the ozone. To this day, controversy. But Sweden was ahead of the game. What would your money get you in 1978? Well, let me walk you through it, my friends. For 63 cents, get yourself a gallon of gasoline. You want to buy a house? You're just going to need a cool 548. That's 54,800 bucks. Uh, and if you ladies wanted to get yourself some corduroy overalls, that's going to set you back $22. The best-selling song of the year was Andy Gibbs' Shadow Dancing. In fact, worth mentioning, in Billboard's year-end chart in the top 10, Barry Gibb had written, or co-written, Night Fever, Staying Alive, How Deep Is Your Love, and Shadow Dancing. That is four of the top 10. That means that six other people had a chance. But no thank you, says Barry Gibb, for uh, the top honors of most written songs. The album of the year, obviously, was Saturday Night Fever soundtrack. Uh, Rolling Stones' album of the year was Elvis Costello's This Year's Model. But this week on Jimmy's Records and Tapes, I'm going to be talking about something from my collection, and that is Chicago's Hot Streets. This is their 12th album. And this one, uh, for some reason, very sentimental to me. Uh, it's their 10th studio album. It was released in October of, of 1978. It was produced by Phil Ramone. It is the first album not to be produced by James William Gersio, who did the previous 11. Uh, it is also, sadly, the first album to not feature Terry Kath. Uh, Terry, of course, uh, died tragically in a gun accident, and he was replaced by a gentleman named Donnie Dacus, who you may remember was in the movie Hair, uh, and he also did a couple of albums with Stephen Stills. Um, he was not well-received by the Chicago fans. Uh, for some reason, they didn't like that he had long hair, uh, even though uh, six of the other... Seven members had long hair, but for some reason, Donnie having long hair, and God forbid a perm, wasn't welcomed. Donnie is a great guitarist and a great vocalist, in my opinion, uh, and really just never had a chance. Um, he was fitting, uh, had to fit these uh, amazingly huge shoes uh, of Terry Kath, and I think anybody that came on this album probably would have been the guy that kind of took, uh, uh, took a fall for whoever would come after him um, that might be there a little bit longer. Um, uh, which is sad because, as I mentioned, he was a great guitarist uh, and a great vocalist and I think a great songwriter. I wrote a couple, a couple of great songs for Stephen Stills called Turn Back the Pages and Closer to You that Chicago ended up covering and or doing live in concert. And he also um, contributes the song Ain't It Time off this album, which I think is fantastic. Um, as far as singles go, Alive Again uh, was released and I obviously was very excited about that because my voice went up about 19 octaves. Uh, that reached number 14 on the chart. Also reaching number 14 was the follow-up, No Tell Lover, which gave Lee Lachnane, I believe, his second or third uh, writing credit. Uh, and then the third single was Gone Long Gone, which only went to number 73, which makes sense because in this humble reporter's mind, uh, Greatest Love on Earth should have been the third single. But for my money, the title track, Robert Lamb's Hot Streets, um, is maybe my favorite Chicago song of all time. Uh, maybe number two, only behind Beginnings, which Robert also wrote. Um, but the title track on this is fantastic, uh, Hot Streets. The Bee Gees do some backup vocals on this album, because why wouldn't they? They were everywhere else. Why would Chicago be left out of the Bee Gees fun? Uh, they sing backups on a song that Peter Cetera wrote called Little Miss Lovin' that uh, I'm 98% sure would be problematic in 2019. Should have been problematic in 1978, uh, ooh, sweet 16, mighty fine in your tight blue jeans, is the line from the song. Uh, and then the Bee Gees, ah, 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 in the background, uh, 
hopefully maybe to distract you from the fact that this song is 100% offensive uh, about Peter Cetera wanting to get with a 16-year-old girl. But it was a different time, man. That's what we're always told. Um, the first albums I bought from Chicago were Hot Streets, 13 and 14, which are um, historically the least uh, popular albums and uh, critically uh, hated, both by uh, fans and critics alike. Uh, but because they were when I first really discovered Chicago, uh, they kind of are in my favorites. Up there with Chicago 5 and Chicago 2. I also became very obsessed with the band Chicago. Um, in fact, when Chicago 17 came out uh, in 1984, I wore a different Chicago shirt every day to school. Um, and a teacher made fun of me. Diana Ingram was like, what are you doing with this shirt? Every day you're wearing a different Chicago shirt. And I said, she, as if it was the proud moment of my life. I said, Chicago 17 comes out this week. And she went, okay. And I then still had two more days of shirts to wear because I committed to this and I can't let Mr. Peter Cetera down. Chicago also let me have two of the greatest moments that I had with my parents. My dad was a big Chicago fan, as I had mentioned, and uh, my mom liked them. But one time I was in a, we were in a parking lot. Uh, it was my dad, my brother, and I were waiting to go see a movie. And um, Just You and Me by Chicago, which is on the sixth album, came on the radio. And my dad, we were all just kind of listening to it. My dad's like, hey, let's, uh, let's let this song play out. I want, I want to hear the end of it before we go in. And there's a part where they come out of a saxophone solo where he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And my dad chose to just sing that line. And for whatever reason, my brother and I thought it was the funniest thing in the world. And my dad, who I've never really seen be embarrassed, kind of got embarrassed a little bit. And then the three of us laughed like idiots. And to this day, I'll go to my dad, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we laugh like jackasses. My mom one time, uh, this was, I was listening to Chicago 8. And there's a, a song called Long Time No See that also has some saxophone on it. And I was in the bathroom, this is in Oak Forest, Illinois. I was in the bathroom uh, shaving, ready to get ready for work. And my mom was um, leaving uh, for her to go to work. She worked at a bank. And um, out of the, I'm shaving in the mirror and out of the corner of my eye, I see my mom with perfect timing for this saxophone uh, riff, walks from side to side of the open doorway into the bathroom and just went, da-da, 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 da-da. And I just like I go. I just start laughing like crazy. I go, "What are you doing?" And because I, I, while my mom was a fun, silly person, this may have been the silliest at, uh, that I've ever seen her be. And I said, "What are you doing?" And she said, "Oh, I love sax." And I said, "Well, I do too. I just don't like talking about it with my mother." And we just, if I'm going to quote Thin Lizzy, we just fell about the place. Anyway, if you dig Chicago and you think that they're just the '80s soft rock, uh, they're not. And if you just love those first albums and go, hey, man, they were never as good as when they were with Kath, this album is a lot better than people give it credit for. Uh, so please revisit or enjoy for the first time Hot Streets. This week's quick hit is Donna Summer's version of MacArthur Park. Single version. Very important that I put the parenthetical single version because on the album... Uh, it is a medley with the song Heaven Knows, and that goes for 17 minutes. It's a live album. Uh, they released it as a single, comes in as a tight four minutes, and it is a cover of Jimmy Webb's great song, MacArthur Park. Um, growing up, my mother loved Richard Harris and his average voice, uh, but he sang with a rawness uh, that, quite frankly, nobody else could ever capture. Uh, in my opinion, Richard Harris and Glenn Campbell were really the only people that really were able to capture Jimmy Webb's songs uh, in a way that I think Jimmy, even himself, could not do um, as a performer. Uh, but Donna Summer had a number one hit uh, with her version of MacArthur Park. It was a disco version um, that was on the charts for ages. Uh, it would fill the dance floors. There are still complaints to this day. What is MacArthur Park about? And to which I say, who cares? Just enjoy it. There's a man wearing a striped pair of pants. If you don't like that line, then you shouldn't listen to music. My only concern about this song, Donna Summer's version, is she unnecessarily changed men playing checkers to men playing Chinese checkers. I don't know why she felt the need to upgrade or downgrade that, but she did. But what do I know? It went to number one. That is this week's quick hit, MacArthur Park, single version!
Hey, everybody, that is this week's episode of Jimmy's Records and Tapes. If you dug it, like us, subscribe to us. If you want to know more about me, I'm at Jimmy Pardo on Twitter. And of course, I host the award winning podcast, Never Not Funny, that you can find on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you download your listening pleasured goods. We'll see you next time. Until then, the record store is closed. <laughs>